Welcome back to Romy Roots. In this video, I am going to do another mapping project, mapping my family history. I'm going to map the life of one specific ancestor. This is Sarah Booth. She is my third great grandmother. She was born in Tennessee in 1828 and died in St. Louis in 1917, but she did a lot of moving around in between those years. If you are related to Sarah Booth, please let me know in the comments down below because that would mean that we're cousins. But basically I wanna map out Sarah's life because she moved around so much. It's incredibly hard to keep track of all the places that she lived and there are some lingering questions that I have about her life and records that I haven't been able to find. So I'm just thinking that putting it all on a map will help me visualize her life a little bit more, maybe see things that I could be missing when I'm thinking of places to look for records. Um, and I want to take you along on this journey. So here we are on a brand new, fresh Google My Maps. I love this moment when I have a brand new map right in front of me, just waiting to be filled up. I have named it Sarah Booth Life. <laughs> um, pretty boring name, but that's what it is. It's her life. So let's go back to our ancestry profile um, and see what we have here. So she was born in Tennessee in March, 1828. Now I don't know where in Tennessee exactly she was born, but I do have her listed in the 1830 census or I have her father listed in the 1830 census in Perry County, Tennessee. So I am going to put that as the first pin on this map. So here we have Perry County, Tennessee. Now I don't really know the outline of Perry County though, and that would be interesting to figure out what the county looked like in 1830. So I know sort of the towns and the cities that I'm dealing with. So let's search for that actually. Here I am at the Library of Congress's website and I actually found a map of Tennessee dated 1832. So I think this will satisfy my search. Um, I just wanna make sure that the Perry County that I'm mapping right now is the Perry County that existed in 1830, not the Perry County that exists today. And for all I know, they could be the same counties, they could have the same borders, but I don't really know that. So I'm going to use this map to map out Perry County. Okay, so here I have mapped out Perry County, Tennessee, as it looked like in 1830, or at least I tried to. Now it looks fairly accurate. Um, I don't know, the purpose of this really was to just get an idea of what towns she could have lived in um, in 1830 when she was only two years old. Now I know I can find that information um, with land records and such. I just haven't gotten into that yet. Um, so this will be interesting though. This will be very helpful in locating new records and also just visualizing where she lived. Now the next event that we have for Sarah is the 1840 census. Um, Please disregard my little notes to myself. I keep all my trees private. Um, this is purely for myself, so I have a lot of nonsense in here with notes and hypotheses and things like that. So you're getting the real inside look into my genealogy. But here we have the 1840 census, when I'm fairly certain that they're living in Jackson County, Tennessee. Now I don't know where in Jackson County, but there is another county that we get to map out. So let's try to find Jackson County, Tennessee. So here we are on a map on the Library of Congress's website from 1836. Now this should do the trick. So I'm going to try to map out Jackson County very rudimentally. Okay, so here I have what <laughs> I think is Jackson County. <laughs> Illinois, um, I did a very bad job. I mean, it was pretty hard. This is what I was handed. These towns I couldn't even find on maps anymore, Ovid and Brownville. I really just winged it. Um, if you're from Illinois and you live in Jackson County, let me know if that looks uh, <laughs> any bit accurate to you. But um, the pin that Google Maps also gave me was right in the middle, so I just sort of went around it. Um, Hopefully that's right. So here we have the county that she lived in in 1830, and then supposedly in 1840, her family lived somewhere in this county. So now we have 1830 on the map, we have 1840 on the map. Um, in 1848, Sarah was married also in Jackson County, Illinois. Now I don't know exactly where, so that warrants a bit more research. But let's head on to 1850. Now in the 1850 federal census, Sarah and her husband 
were listed as living in Liberty, Randolph County, Illinois. Now, from the research that I've done, Liberty actually doesn't exist anymore, and actually today the town is known as Rockwood. So here is Rockwood, Illinois, and I'm going to add this to the map and rename it Liberty. And now this is really interesting. So let's go back to the ancestry page. Now this is a perfect example why mapping your ancestors can be so incredibly helpful. Here in 1848 and 1850, two years apart, Sarah is living in two ostensibly totally different areas. I have never been to Illinois. I know nothing about Illinois. So when I look at this, I think like, wow, she moved around a lot. She was in Perry County, Tennessee, then she was in Jackson County, Illinois, then Randolph County, Illinois, and then she'd move on to Missouri. And just here, if we zoom into 1848 and 1850, you know, I would wonder, okay, why was she married in one place? And then two years later, she was already moving to another place. I had no idea how close Jackson County and Randolph County were. For all I knew, they were in totally different parts of the state. But when I actually look at the map and put Liberty or Rockwood down on the map, we see that it actually is literally just on the border with Jackson County, Illinois. So this raises a few questions. Well, it raises one question. Maybe um, I <laughs> mapped this wrong. <laughs> But actually, no, I know I didn't because in the 1850 census, it actually says she is in Randolph County. So they must have just hopped across the border. It raises the question of whether the border could have changed between 1848 and 1850. Maybe in 1848, um, Rockwood or Liberty was in Jackson County, Illinois. So that's another question that I'd have to ask a historian or look into more. But for the time being, I'll just keep it like this. The two places they lived, although different on paper, are right next to each other in reality. And I love that aspect of maps because it really puts things into perspective for you and it, it makes you rethink your ancestors' lives. So let's keep going. They live in Liberty Township in 1850 and 10 years later in 1860, they actually move to Washington County, Missouri. Now, from what a simple Google search tells me, um, it actually maps it out for me and it says it's an inactive township in Washington County. So let's try to map this township out really quick. Okay, so here we have a very rough depiction of Concord Township, which is where she lived in 1860. And in 1870, if we go back to her ancestry profile, she then lived in Bellevue. Actually learned something very interesting. Down here is Bellevue, Missouri, where I just assumed when all the censuses said Bellevue Township, they must have lived near Bellevue, Missouri. But, and I could be wrong, so if I'm wrong, please let me know down below in the comments. What I found about Bellevue Township is that it actually didn't encompass Bellevue, Missouri. Bellevue Township was up here, north, sort of centered around Caledonia. And as far as I know, the township that the actual town of Bellevue was in didn't actually have a name. I think it was Township 25 Range something or other. Um, but this is interesting. So yet again, another thing that I've come to realize after I've started mapping out my ancestors' lives, where I thought my ancestors lived is actually not very accurate. Um, so I really can't stress this enough. I know I say this all the time, but map out your ancestors' lives. You will learn so much more and it'll put everything into perspective and you are going to learn some pretty interesting things. And now we bring ourselves to 1880. So in 1880, Sarah is listed in the census as living in Iron Mountain, St. Francois County. I've heard that people in Missouri actually say St. Francis County, not St. Francois. If you're from Missouri, please let me know how to say it because I don't want to go there and make a fool of myself saying St. Francois when people actually say St. Francis. So let me know. Um, but apparently in 1880, she lived in Iron Mountain and worked as a hotel keeper. So that should be a fairly easy one. I believe it's somewhere near Bismarck. Oh no, I think it's down here, Iron Mountain Lake. Iron Mountain was this small little community. Let's add that to the map. And then we come to, of course, 1900. Now it doesn't look like the 1900 census in this part of the country has street names or house numbers, which is a shame 
because it does offer the enumerator to include that information. That's a shame. Opportunity lost. Um, but she was living in Bismarck with her son, Douglas. This also raises another question of how accurate I'm being in my mapping out these townships because I just looked at Iron Township because it says Bismarck City is within Iron Township. From what I can see, or from what Google told me, Iron Township is actually encompassing Bellevue, so just south of Caledonia. Bismarck, of course, is up here, and it is not an Iron Township, so I'm not sure if I'm mapping these using the wrong information. Who knows what I'm doing? Either way, I'm sort of accurate in my strategy, so I'm just going to keep going with it. It obviously requires a lot more research, um, but it does say Bismarck City on this census, so I am assuming this is Bismarck up here, so I'm just going to mark that on the map and I'll put that as 1900 and then we come to the last census that Sarah is listed in and she is living as a boarder in St. Louis but I do have the exact address it's 228 Taylor Ave. Now again if I remember correctly I don't think that building is there anymore um let's see Taylor Ave St. Louis 228 North or South Taylor Ave? Or 228 Taylor Ave, Maryland Heights? That doesn't look right. That looks way too suburban. North Taylor Ave. Or 228 South Taylor Ave would be somewhere down here. That is a good question. So this is the 19th census that Sarah is listed in, and it says she resides at 228 Taylor Avenue, and I believe this would have been North Taylor Avenue, because looking at the neighboring streets, there is Lindell Boulevard and Marilyn Ave, and if we go back to where it says 228 North Taylor Avenue is, there is a Lindell Boulevard right here and a Maryland Ave, so it would appear that 228 North Taylor Avenue is where the hotel she was staying at was once. It now looks like it is a park, which is unfortunate. Um, but that is where she lived. So let's add that. So here I actually have her death certificate and it lists her residence as 5667 Von Versen Street. Now I did some research and Von Versen Street apparently, or Von Versen Avenue as it was, apparently became Enright Avenue and so I looked up 5667 Enright Avenue and whatever was once there doesn't appear to be there anymore. And finally, the last place that we are going to put on this map for Sarah Booth's life is, of course, the place that she rests today, which is Bellefontaine Cemetery in St. Louis. That's where she was buried. And there we have it. Here is the entire life, well, not the entire life, but a good outline of the entire life of my third great-grandmother, Sarah Booth. So, of course, this raises more questions than it answers, like where exactly in Perry County did she live, where exactly in Jackson County, where exactly in these townships, but it does help me sort of visualize the path of her life a little bit more. Now, just to add one more point that I actually realized, um, in 1837, Sarah's mom remarried. So Sarah's biological dad was not in her life for barely any time at all. And in 1837, which is between when Sarah's listed in the 1830 census down here and the 1840 census up here, her mother and this new father actually married in Gallatin County, which is over here. So that does actually add a little bit more insight into Sarah's life. Um, we have a non-census year. All that to say that this is a super fun exercise and just one of many different exercises that you can use to map your ancestors using Google My Maps. This is mapping out the life of one ancestor from start to finish, using pinpoints, using shapes. It really puts things into perspective. So thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you are going to do this yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the Romeo Roots YouTube channel and turn on notifications to be updated every time I upload a new video. I post videos like this, as well as tutorials and travel vlogs, because Romeo Roots is all about genealogy tourism. If you have an Instagram, be sure to follow us at Romeo Roots to stay updated with all the things we're doing, and join us on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash Roots.